pra there's a practice problem on open edX, which I covered in lecture two. So what did you think? Yeah, the second, uh, let's see, I don't even. Okay, the second one is the right one. Yeah, but the question is why? So just to, so that everybody's on the same page, basically this was dealing, if you remember, we were talking about compartmental modeling. This was a one compartment model, and I implemented it two ways. One was in which 4045 calls a function in which within the function, so for some period of time, I have an infusion of a drug and then I cut off the infusion of the drug, right? So, so basically in one case, my differential equation is some input minus the elimination term. And then in the second phase, my differential equation is just the elimination term. Now in MATLAB, I implemented this two ways. One was that within the function called by OD45, I write an if else statement saying that if the time is greater than the cutoff time, then just have this elimination term if the time is less than that, then have the input term minus the elimination term. So those, the other way I implemented it was that I called OD45 twice, right? Right, one for the uh, infusion stage, one for the cutoff stage, and then I concatenated the output. And it turns out you might think that the output in both cases should be the same, but as you can clearly see the output, there's this little hump that's created in the case where I use the if else statement. And the question really comes down to why that, does that hump come about? Okay. Okay, so yeah, so mathematically, I think what is sort of what you're saying, and the way to understand this mathematically is that all numerical integrators assume that your function is totally differentiable. Whereas at this point where you cut off the infusion, you lose differentiability because on one hand your differential equation is this, on the other hand your differential equation is that. And so it evaluates to different points. And so that's why you get that little hump because sort of what Rohit was saying, that's what it comes down to. But it's because, so this very important point, that's why I kept coming back to it, is differentiability is an assumption made in all numerical integrators. That your functions are different. Sometimes they won't be. And if they won't be, then you have to use sort of, you have to call OD45 many times, estimating wherever there are breaks, and then concatenate the outputs together. Yes, you can, right? Because, so if you look at what I did here, yes, as long as, as long as the point is, um, so you just have to be, I think that should work still. The only thing is that, the only thing that's different between the two, solver, so, two solvers practically is that the accuracy is different a little bit. So it shouldn't really matter because what you do in this case is you just pass out to the last value of Y1, which is my, the last value of the infusion phase becomes my initial value for the cutoff phase. So that should work irrespective of which solver. So something similar to the palm set where we have, yeah, okay. So we'll talk about that, but in the case of the palm set, I'll quickly mention this, get rest. But uh, is, that, is, that, is that I have both equations within the function called by LSQ curve fit. So then, because LSQ curve fit gets all the parameters in, both equations use those four parameters, or a subset of those four parameters, so both of them are in the same function. LSQ curve fit doesn't call separate functions with each one equation, sorry. Does that make sense? I'll, I'll, let's talk about it more after class. But you can use all parameters then. Okay, so, okay, so going, getting back to convolutions. So the first thing I want you to understand is this idea of a linear time invariant system. Uh, very important idea, and these are just definitions here. A linear system, and you can think of a linear system as even like a straight line is a linear system, mx plus c, where the input x is converted to the output y. y is equal to mx plus c, right? That's a linear system as well. So it, the terminology is, sounds a little bit formal, but you can think of it in your own ways. But a linear system by definition, this is the one property that it satisfies. If you have alpha, beta constants and two time inputs, f1 and f2, 
a linear, you can basically, what it's saying is that the constant can be pushed out and the output of the constant times an input is equal to the constant times the output of the input, right? And also that you can basically, this, this is a principle of superposition, which I'm pretty sure you're familiar with physics that, you know, you can sum two inputs together and the sum of the output of the individual inputs is equal to the output of the sum of the individual.